The Special Investigating Unit team led by Advocate Andy Mutibi is briefing Scopa on personal protective equipment investigation outcomes. Let's take you there live. Uh, uh, I am joined by my colleagues from the provincial heads and my colleagues, some of my colleagues from the EXCO. Uh, in the interest of time, we'll not in introduce all of them, but whenever they come in onto the platform, uh, we'll introduce them. Uh, the provincial heads will take the last part, which really deals with the investigations uh, finalized in their areas in this time of reporting. As you correctly said, Honorable Chair, uh, this is the report to SCOPA based on the sixth progress report uh, that was submitted uh, to the president. Uh, and it deals primarily with matters that have been finalized uh, uh, in, that, in that report. The last time we appeared at Scopa, we presented uh, based on the fifth report that was submitted. So, so the next one would be the seventh and the final, uh, which uh, uh, we will be submitting to the president on the 10th of December. Uh, so, so we are really hard at work finalizing uh, that, that report so that it reaches uh, the president on the time that has been allocated to us by the president. Um, I would like to then proceed uh, with today's presentation. Uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Lecheto, please, can you uh, project the presentation? Uh, and then let's, let's start off. Uh, honorable chair and honorable members, uh, as we always do, we really present high level the legislative mandate, which we will not spend time on. We've done that time and time again at Scopa. Uh, if you go to slide number three, that's the legislative mandate, which we will not go through. And then slide number four. Slide number four, honorable chair, again, is really just to spend a minute on it. Because uh, uh, as we now close on the investigations, we will be focusing in the main on ensuring that the outcomes of the investigations are implemented and consequence management is meted out. In terms of all those uh, uh, boxes that appear in front of the Honorable Committee, we will be updating the committee on the civil litigation process uh, that we have instituted mainly in the special tribunal, but there are other few that uh, that are in the High Court instituted by those who take action to challenge our reports. They, they usually approach the High Court. So we've got a few of those and we'll mention them. Uh, as, we, as we have said before, that the Special Tribunal is approached or the High Courts to institute civil proceedings uh, where there are potential recoveries of assets. We also preserve uh, 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 pensions and other assets and bank accounts to ensure that when we ultimately recover, uh, there are monies that we can uh, uh, resort to. We will be updating the committee on the, on the new referrals in this period of reporting, and we will touch on uh, the other previous referrals we have we've reported on, on the disciplinary actions that we have referred to the state institutions, and based on our follow-ups, what is it that is the progress update? And we will also then be uh, briefing the committee on the referrals of criminal evidence to the NPA, where we have found evidence pointing to criminal action, and we require the NPA to make an appropriate decision in that regard. 
And then of course, there's other referrals to other regulators. Uh, we will also, as we now finalize the report, we will also be talking on the systemic recommendations. Uh, but today we will really just make mention in the final report, there will be a area where we address quite at length, what are we going to do around systemic recommendations? Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Yes, as, as we said, this is the uh, briefing of Scopa based on the sixth report, you can proceed. Uh, go to slide, the next slide, slide number seven. Uh, honorable chair and honorable members, as we always do, we always refer uh, to the actual COVID expenditure uh, as at the time when we are investigating. And these are the figures that we check with the national treasury. Uh, we, we, we've checked that the actual COVID expenditure uh, as at April to June 2021, is about 138.8 billion. The, now of that amount, the total value of the contracts being investigated by SIU is 14.8 billion. That is the contract value. Now, as at the time of this reporting, uh, of the 14.8 billion that is under investigations uh, and uh, based on the SIU investigations, uh, we've also determined that uh, the 14.8 billion is about 11% of the COVID uh, expenditure of 138.8 billion. Now, of that, of that, uh, 14.8 billion worth of irregular contracts. The investigations that have been completed and outcomes have been reached, particularly with regards to referrals of matters to the special tribunal. As at the date of this report, we have referred about 1.91 billion worth of contract value of contracts that have been found to be irregular by the investigations. And those have been referred to the special tribunal in order to set the contracts aside and to recover the losses that the state institutions would have suffered. Uh, the blue part of that circle, uh, it's obviously the, the balance if you take out the 14.8 billion, uh, we left with about 124 billion. Next slide. Chair, we thought it appropriate also that we just show this picture. Uh, you'll see there that uh, most of the expenditure uh, has been spent at, uh, at a national level. Uh, and this would mean national state institutions. And uh, that those institutions, in terms of this data, about 101 billion has been spent uh, to those uh, institutions, followed by provincial state institutions at about 32 uh, billion, and then followed by local government at about 5.1 billion. Now we show on the extreme right just how we have dissected the 14.8 billion that is under investigation. Uh, as, as the committee would see that uh, uh, the investigations actually reflect that most of those irregular contracts uh, are in the, in the provincial uh, state institutions, uh, followed by national, and uh, the last one, it's, uh, it's local government. Now, having done that, uh, honorable chair, we obviously then set ourselves off to investigate and we've been reporting uh, various outcomes. If we go to the next slide, 
The next slide, Honorable Chair, uh, as we've done before, we all, always indicate if there are any limitations that we have experienced during the investigation. We have reported before, uh, and these are found in slides number nine to 12. In this report, there are no new limitations, Honorable Chair, that we report. What we want to just put on record is that these limitations, as we have reported before, uh, just an example, if you go on slide number 10, we showed limitations on the left-hand side and steps taken on the right-hand side to mitigate these limitations. So our, our observation up to now is that the steps that we have taken to mitigate the limitations have really assisted the investigations. And these limitations have been reported before, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. We will not go through them uh, one by one, except to just report that uh, the steps that we have taken have really uh, showed value in mitigating the limitations. If we go to slide number 13, slide number 13, Honorable Chair, introduces the observations that we also make as we do the investigations. And we have reported before, uh, these are the observations relating to how these irregularities were committed, uh, including the modus operandi that has been uh, used by all these people who are implicated with these irregularities. Now, all these uh, observations, Honorable Chair, again, we've reported them before. They are on slide number 14. You can go to slide 14. Uh, as, as, as the Honorable Committee can see, uh, uh, slide 14, slide, slide number 15, we've reported them before. Slide 15, slide 16, and they go up to slide number number 17. What, what we would like to emphasize today, honorable chair and honorable members around these observations. Again, as we finalize our uh, investigations now and prepare the final report, the question is what, what becomes of these observations? This is where we will have to play a critical role as SIU, particularly around the systemic recommendations and how to improve and make sure that measures are put in place by state institutions. We will probably engage uh, with the National Treasury as well so that we can present our observations and how is it that we recommend that all of these should be mitigated going forward so that uh, we do not have the experience of this wild, uh, large-scale uh, irregularities and corruption that we have observed uh, during this PPE uh, uh, procurement. So we will be doing that, honorable chair and honorable members. It will be included in the, in the final report in terms of how we're gonna engage uh, with, the, with the state institutions, in particular, the National Treasury, on how to take this into account uh, in terms of in improving the system, improving the legislation, and just put in, you know, putting the appropriate controls in place to mitigate this kind of, uh, of, of, of irregularities going forward. That deals with the uh, comments on the observations. Um, there are no new observations that the teams have picked up uh, during the investigations in this uh, reporting period. Now that takes us to uh, slide number 18, which introduces the contracts under investigation. And if you slide to slide number 19, please. Honorable Chair, as we always show the picture to the uh, Honorable Committee, uh, as at the time of this uh, uh, progress report, the number of PPE contracts awarded for COVID-19 
related services under investigations by the SIU, the contracts numbered at 5,054. And these uh, were awarded to about 2,686 service providers. Now we've broken it down in terms of uh, uh, percentages. 29% uh, of these uh, investigations into these contracts and service providers have been finalized as at the time of this, uh, of this report. 64% uh, was still ongoing at the time, and 7% had yet to commence at the time. Uh, as the honorable members can see, that uh, the final or the, the value, the value of contracts, which is uh, the second block from the right, the overall value uh, aligns with the one we have reported. Uh, in the previous slide, which is about 14.8 billion rands. Honorable Chair, I need to pause at this stage and just underline that uh, uh, as, as of today, and when we now prepare for the final report, the picture has really changed immensely uh, from the picture as it is now. Um, the, as I checked with the reporting and quality assurance team, uh, uh, which we were just left with about few, uh, about two provinces to finalize this picture. Uh, uh, but we will give this picture to the committee well at the next at the next reporting. But I would have loved to just give a comparison uh, of how in the final report it would look like but we didn't want to distort the picture because the team is still working on incorporating the two provinces that were outstanding. But suffice to say that the picture would have, will show a significant improvement. In fact, uh, uh, as, as at yesterday, there were no contract investigations that were still to commence. Uh, and now we were just finalizing the the figures. So this report uh, actually uh, records matters. Uh, as at, it is the sixth report, but it reports uh, the investigations that uh, were as at the 9th of July. Uh, as at the 9th of July were included in this sixth report that was sent uh, to, the, to the president. So why am I saying that, Honorable Chair? It's that uh, if you count from 9th July to today, uh, to the 7th of December, I think we're counting about, about uh, five months. So in the five months that has passed, uh, uh, we have really done uh, our utmost best so that we finalize the investigations that uh, we are reporting on in this sixth report. Uh, slide number 20. As we always show the picture to the Honorable Committee, this is really by province uh, uh, in terms of the finalized investigations per province and the values related to the contracts that the provinces are in investigating or investigated. Uh, without going through all of the provinces, I just really picked up about four provinces in terms of contract value. The first one being KZN of finalized matters, and they finalized matters to the value of 2.1 billion. Uh, it's followed by national team, the national, which is the national state entities, they finalized investigations to the tune of 1.5 billion. Number three is Eastern Cape at the bottom there. They finalized uh, investigations to the tune of 1.4 billion. Number four, uh, it's, it's Houghton, the Houghton province at the top. 
uh, finalized investigations worth 1.2 billion. And then the rest of the provinces really show their respective values. The next slide, honorable chair, just shows, uh, shows ongoing investigations as at the time uh, of this progress report. Once more, I just picked up uh, per province with the highest value, about four of them. Uh, number one, Houting team. The Houting team, as at the time of this report, uh, still had matters to, four, to the value of 4.5 billion uh, under investigation. And the contribution of this high value uh, was from the Department of Education in Houting. And of course, there were also infrastructure uh, built investigations, uh, which one of them has been finalized and we are already at the special tribunal. We'll report at it, we'll report at it now when we go into the civil litigation matters. So those contributed to this high value, but the team in the past five months to date have really worked hard. We have prioritized these investigations, honorable chair and honorable members, so that we are able to complete them and report uh, in the final report uh, uh, so that uh, uh, we can really uh, end and get finality to this PPE investigations reports. And then of course, follow up with all those consequence management. Right, so Gauteng is followed by national, national team which was still investigating about 448 million worth of contracts. Number three, Eastern Cape, still investigating 527 million worth of uh, contracts. Number four is KZN. As you can see, the KZN team has really worked hard to work down the contracts that they were uh, investigating um, to about 99 million uh, ongoing as at the time of this report. The next, the next slides. We are going now, honorable chair uh, and honorable members, into the outcomes of the investigations. And as I indicated in the outcomes slide, uh, we start off with the outcomes that led to the civil litigation matters where irregularities have been found with the contracts under investigation. Uh, with your permission, honorable chair at the stage, uh, I will introduce the chief legal counsel of uh, SIU, Dr. Wells, who will take the honorable committee uh, through the updates and progress made on the civil litigation matters. Over to you, Dr. Wells. Uh, good morning, Honourable Chair and Honourable Members. Um, uh, thank you, Advocate Matibi. Um, uh, dear Honourable Chair, um, I'm also joined on the platform by the Head of the Civil Litigation Unit at the SAU Advocate Fisahi. The presentation that I'm about to do, uh, uh, Honourable Members and Chair, is slides 23 to 44. I will then move to slide 23. Um, uh, on the slide, um, uh, this is a new matters that have been instituted subsequent to the last report by the SIU. And this matter, uh, it was instituted in the special tribunal. As previously alluded to by Advocate Matibi, it deals with the, uh, with the aspect of infrastructure, more particularly the renovation and construction of uh, hospital and uh, accommodation. Um, uh, in this respect, there were three contracts concluded. The SIU established that uh, these contracts were irregularly concluded and awarded and uh, will in the following few weeks bring a review application to have the decision uh, to award the contract set aside. Um, uh, in the page slide number 23, it's just an uh, interim uh, action that was taken. It's the preservation of funds to the amount of 8,000 Rand in, that was held in the account of two service providers 
Uh, that has subsequently been uh, uh, challenged in the special tribunal. And you will note that on uh, slide 24, uh, what we call is the reconsideration application, that judgment has been reserved in that matter. I will then move to slide 25. This deals with matters that have been previously reported to the Honorable Committee. And, uh, and, this, and, and, and the purpose of the presentation that I will deal with here is to just give an update on the matters that have already been instituted. We can move to slide 26. Um, uh, in the following slides, you will note that there are no numbers, so I will refer to rows. Um, uh, uh, previously mentioned is row one, is the matter that uh, was, was the review of the application, uh, or, or the review application concerning the report uh, issued by the uh, SIU. Uh, the impact made is notable that uh, the reports and the recommendations of SIU is subject to legality review and that the executive authority can be held accountable for the religion. I think I just uh, need to repeat that, that has been previously reported. I will move to row two. In that matter is a matter, and, and all these applications that I'm dealing with on this slide are matters that have been issued and instituted or, or opposed by the SIU in the High Court. Um, uh, row two deals with a matter instituted in the Western Cape High Court you will note the last sentence that this matter is now set down for trial on the 3rd of February, 2022. In the row three, we, the parties have now, we successfully joined the proceedings. That means that proceedings were instituted without the SIU. The SIU has now become a party to the litigation. Uh, um, uh, and we obtained such an order granting us that permission and the parties are exchanging pleadings. Um, uh, and uh, we have now, uh, the matter has been heard on 1908, 19 August, 2021, and judgment has been reserved. Let me just correct that. That is for the joining application. Um, uh, the next slide that I want to move to honorable members are, uh, is slide 27. Um, uh, and the the year the numbers a year we fortunately have the slides numbered so one and two we've previously uh, reported on just number one that is the contract that they have been set aside also uh, known as the scooter case uh, that contract has been set aside and uh, the result was that uh, that uh, no payment has to be made by the department uh, the second one is the OR Tambo door to door. Notably in this chair, we previously reported that we obtained an order in this matter. It has subsequently been rescinded and, uh, and we are waiting further directions from the uh, tribunal, the special tribunal uh, concerning the further procedures and hearing of this matter. Uh, number three, uh, chair, uh, we The trial was postponed in this matter. It did not proceed on the 27th of September. The SIU applies for case management on 14 October 2021, and uh, we await a date from the Registrar of the Special Tribunal. So, Chair, um, let me just pause at this time because there will be a lot of references uh, to awaiting dates from the Special, uh, from the Registrar of the Special Tribunal. Uh, it, it is probably just uh, appropriate to give some uh, background to this. Uh, when the parties have concluded uh, uh, the exchange of pleadings, uh, the presiding officer and judge uh, usually give directions as to what pleadings needs to be filed. Pleadings, that means each one must put their case on, 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 on record. And then when, once that is finalized, the parties then need to apply for a date for hearing or for further directions from the Registrar of the Special Tribunal. Now, that is the date we wait, uh, await for the further hearing of, of the matter. Um, uh, Chair, on slide 28, uh, we've previously uh, reported on, 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 on the matter of number four. 
uh, notably judgment is reserved there, meaning that uh, the, the tribunal will issue its decision uh, uh, when uh, they are finalized uh, by the judge. Um, number five, Chair, I will immediately move to slide 30, which is the conclusion of the matter referred to under number five. In this method, uh, honorable members, uh, notably the contract was uh, set aside, reviewed and, and successfully set aside by the SIU. Uh, the respondent filed, uh, ap uh, or applied for leave to appeal to the uh, Supreme Court of Appeal, that was denied. And there is now a pending application in the Constitutional Court. We are now awaiting a date from the Registrar of the Constitutional Court to hear the uh, the appeal or otherwise of the respondents the next slide is slide number 31 chair um, uh, i'll refer to number eight this is similarly a a a situation where the uh, the, the respondent made an application to join certain other parties uh, including uh, uh, the executive authority. Um, uh, that application was unsuccessful. Um, uh, under direction of the judge, this matter uh, uh, has now been uh, uh, has been joined with another matter that has been issued by the SIU. So we bringing an application to join number six and number nine, which is on thirty two. So that matter will be heard as one. Uh, if the application is successful, uh, the joint application by the SIU is successful. Number seven, Chair, um, uh, in this matter, the uh, respondent challenged the, the uh, adequacy uh, uh, of the record filed by the SIU. It said it is not sufficient information uh, that was filed uh, concerning the administrative decision taken. And in this regard, uh, the matter was heard and the judgment is reserved. So I will move to uh, slide 32. This is the matter of Zakeni strategic on number eight. Uh, this matter will be heard uh, on the 2nd of February, 2022 in the special tribunal. I previously reported on number nine which I mentioned will be joined with the uh, with the with the matter noted at number six. Um, number ten is similarly a, a, a an application that was uh, brought in the special tribunal. This case is also being joined with uh, with number thirteen on the following page. And uh, in, in this matter, the application for the review was set down and heard on the 24th to 25th November, and judgment has been reserved. Let me just re note number 10 is done, is then now joined with number 30 on slide 33. Um, uh, number 11, in this matter, it is a application that we brought. Uh, it's unopposed, and we're just awaiting a date from the special tribunal. We can move to slide number 33. Uh, honorable members, on this uh, slide, nothing has materially changed since our last report. Uh, notably, you will know number 14 is also commonly referred to as the bait breach matter and uh, and that matter we by agreement have concluded uh, uh, where the respondent has uh, undertaken not to demand any money and that uh, the department need not settle uh, the 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 contract value but uh, that was done subject to the SIU bringing a review application. So I will turn to slide number 34, where we will deal with the review application that was then subsequently heard. Um, uh, notably in this matter, we have established that uh, 
that the court has, that the special tribunal has jurisdiction and, uh, and uh, it has the powers to, to bring a review application. Sorry, Chair, I'll just uh, to reject the call. Um, in the matter of, of Bay Bridge and, and the pending uh, application, um, uh, I will report on later um, in, the, in the report, but just to confirm that the present the, the present situation is that the judgment has been reserved in terms of the uh, review application. Number 15, Judge Schweier. This matter was postponed and the SAO awaits a hearing date from the register of the special tribunal. Slide 35. Um, uh, this is... Uh, uh, in, in, in this matter, the more recent update is that the, uh, the SIU has joined further respondents and pleadings are being exchanged in, in, in this matter. Um, hearing of the interlocutory and the review application, that is the review application uh, to set aside the contract, uh, will be allocated by the registrar. Um, uh, in the number 17, the, uh, the re most recent update there is that pleadings have closed and the trial date has been set for 11 to 12 March 2022. We have previously uh, dealt with the matter number 18, which is finalized. I will then move to slide number 36. <clears throat> Number 36, number 19, in this, uh, in this matter, the Special Tribunal awarded uh, an order, um, uh, uh, a judgment, in fact, but uh, requested that the judgment be served on the respondent. Um, the, the respondent has now subsequently applied for a decision of judgment, and uh, which the SIU is now opposing, and we are waiting a date from the registrar at the special tribunal. Similarly, number 20, um, uh, in this case, uh, the matter is being opposed by the respondent. And uh, we also applied for a hearing date, which is awaited from the registrar at the special tribunal. I will then uh, move to slide 37. Number 21, uh, Chair, this matter is finalized and reported as such previously. Um, uh, 22, uh, in this case, similarly, the SIU applied for a date and uh, awaiting same from the registrar. Um, uh, so without going into detail as previously done, number 22 to... to number 40. Chair, these are matters that have been instituted in the special tribunal. Um, uh, you will note that all of them, or most of them refer to dates that we are waiting from the registrar where we've applied for hearing dates. And you will note that at, at, uh, at for example, at number 29 on slide 38, that uh, the respondents I have approached the SIU to attempt settlement, and these dates are awaited. And I will refer to these matters specifically. Number 29 on slide 38, we are awaiting an, uh, the settlement proposals, but uh, if same is not uh, received, we will apply for a trial date by 15 December 2021. Similarly, uh, Chair, as number 37 on slide 40, similar procedure. So the point that I wish to make by this is that we're not awaiting and not uh, entertaining any delaying tactics from the respondents in the pursuance and, uh, and, and, and in proceeding with the civil litigation. So uh, in number 37 as well, we are waiting the settlement proposals, but we'll Notwithstanding, if not received, we will apply on that particular date, the 10th of December, 
for a for a trial date. Similarly, at number thirty nine on slide forty. <coughs> Sorry, honourable members. Um, uh, on number forty is the same, and and for the record, uh, slide number forty one. Number forty. If no settlement by the SAU will on fourteen uh, receive, we will on the fourteenth of December apply for a hearing date with the register of the special tribunal. Um, uh, number 41 is once again, uh, it has been previously uh, uh, reported on, but uh, the impact is notable that uh, as Advocate Matibi earlier mentioned, that we do uh, bring restraint applications uh, in respect of uh, officials uh, uh, pension benefits. Uh, so that that is, that is what is also being dealt with in payer on number 42, where we have now subsequently issued summons uh, in respect of those pensions that we've uh, frozen, and as well as in terms of the damages that have been suffered. Now, the Honourable Committee will note that uh, there was a trial date set, uh, but the SIU has reapplied for a date, and uh, we are waiting the date from the registrar. That is similarly on number 43. Um, uh, and uh, notably in the number 44, uh, the SIE has also applied for a date from the special tribunal. Now, uh, honorable members, I will then proceed with the matters dealt with under cover of slide 42 and move to slide 43. Um, uh, the, these are all orders granted, and let me just mention orders in this sense is very generic. Uh, it is the value of the contract set aside or the restraint value of a pension uh, or the contract value that has been reviewed. So it can be one of any of those. And uh, what I just need to uh, insert uh, is that the value of, of these orders uh, is on slide 44, which we omitted, is in the region of 174 million. Uh, honorable members, that is the conclusion of the updates um, uh, and, the, and the report in terms of the new matters instituted by the SIU in the Special Tribunal and in the High Courts. I will then hand back to Advocate Matibi. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wells. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Uh, so, Honorable Members, this really demonstrates that... Uh, uh, well, the Special Investigative Unit, they're giving a virtual briefing to the Standing Committee on Public Accounts.